Do you have a lawn that has dry spots and you can't figure out why? You've tried everything and spent a lot of money trying to different things to remedy it just to get nowhere? Well, I'm going to show you how to fix it through some basic design concepts and techniques and watching this video won't cost you a dime. I'll preface this by saying that I began this video by writing a script and recording the audio for a more detailed video, but while I was editing it, I realized that in that 30 minute video there was way too much information for most of you, so I've created this condensed version and hope that this will help you at least understand why you have bad coverage and explain what can be done about it in most cases. Let's explain some things that do not contribute to dry spots in your lawns. When I say this, I'm speaking from the western United States where it's dry and we don't have critters like grubs attacking the roots of the lawns. Here are some of the things I've heard over the years that are blamed for dry spots yet are myths. Number one, insects are invading the lawn. Two, bad water. Three, bad soil, four, construction materials buried under the lawn, five, I need to use a different type of sprinkler, six, tree roots are causing it. I'm not going to go down the list and discuss these things other than number one. In a hundred percent of cases, I have proven that fixing the irrigation coverage issues will drive away the insect problem. The coverage issue is the cause of the insects, not the other way around. Irrigation coverage can seemingly be so elusive since it seems to be so common to drive down the street in some neighborhoods and see lawn after lawn with dry areas on them. But there is a perfectly reasonable answer for this. Most front yard landscapes in developed neighborhoods are installed by the same landscapers who may or may not know how to properly design and install irrigation systems. You might find that hard to believe, but it's true. In most states, there are no certifications, licenses, or standards for irrigation design and installation. Ludicrous, right? Your state may require a landscaper to obtain a license by way of a background check and testing, but it typically doesn't include irrigation design and installation knowledge. According to the Irrigation Association, as of the publishing of this video, the following states are the only ones that require you to obtain an irrigation contracting license to practice landscape irrigation. Louisiana, New Jersey, North Carolina, and Texas. So with no requirements to learn design correctly and very few people learning it from formal education, here's what Hippocrates has said has happened. There are, in fact, two things, science and opinion. The former begets knowledge and the latter ignorance. To apply this to the irrigation industry, the lack of knowledge for proper design has been propagated from one person to the next in each irrigation business, and each time it's passed on, it typically degrades each time. One of my main goals with this channel is to help stop that cycle and start fresh with a new foundation of knowledge and understanding of proper irrigation design, installation, troubleshooting, and repairs. What I am going to share is just the basics, since I won't have time here to go into detail. That will be in a later offering. This video is the first part of a three-part series. This video will give you the extreme foundational basics, then the second one will show you a real job and show why they had bad coverage and how I dealt with it. The third video will take you to the job a month or so afterward and show you the long-term results. In nearly 40 years of seeing coverage issues in lawns, here are the most common reasons. Incorrect sprinkler placement. Incorrect nozzles for the situation, too many sprinklers on the lines, irrigation water pressure is too low. This directly affects the fact that there's too many sprinklers on the line. Clogged or broken nozzles or sprinkler bodies. Pop-ups are too low. 
Broken pipe. Pinched pipe. The first three are the most common reasons. To achieve proper coverage, a proper design and installation first has pop-ups in each corner, then evenly spaced along the perimeters, then in the middle only if needed. The sprinkler sprays must reach each other. Why? Because the nozzles are all designed for distance. They are not designed to spray in front of themselves. That's why a lot of times you'll see dry spots right in front of sprinklers. It's the job of the sprays on either side and across from them to reach and spray the area in front of them. Make sense? Are you experiencing this? All too often, installers cut corners, literally, by not putting heads in the corners or in the center when needed. They also put the heads too far apart so the sprays can't reach each other and they put too many heads on each line. Rainbird does make a nozzle called an undercut nozzle that will spray in front of itself, but they should only be used to help with bad coverage, not to be used in the initial design. Helping bad coverage is what they were designed for, but your first plan of attack should always be to attempt to get the sprays to reach each other. As I mentioned in this video, when using rotary nozzles like this, it's imperative that you have proper head placement and good coverage or you're just wasting your money. These rotary nozzles tend to cost more than four times the price of a standard nozzle. One thing you don't want to do is mix head types like this. You don't want rotor or rotary nozzles mixed on the same line as standard pop-ups. Each require different watering times and they spray different distances, so you'll have a tough time getting head-to-head -head coverage. The standard nozzle's rule of thumb run time is 10 minutes, while the rotary nozzle is a minimum of 20 minutes and the rotor sprays is 30. There are other examples of incorrect nozzles for the situation, but that would be a rabbit trail that we may travel down some other day. Hey, what's up, Doc? How can you tell if you have too many on the line? Well, one way is when you turn on the line, the sprinkler should pop right up. I know what, another way you can tell whether there's too many heads on the line is how long it takes for the pop-ups to actually pop up. And this is taking a while. Another way to tell is by carefully placing your foot or finger on the sprinkler when it's spraying. If it can be pushed down, there's too many. If you can push it down with your pinky, then there's probably two to three times too many heads on the line. But on this line, Again, another one inch line. These heads go all the way around. Where's my finger? These heads go all the way around the perimeter of the lawn on a one inch line. There's absolutely no way. 19 15 foot sprays equals 30 gallons a minute. But this one inch Schedule 40 pipe can only handle 12 gallons a minute. So see how I solved this in part two of this series. So on this, you'll see, I, I could push this down with my pinky, literally. There's my pinky. And I pushed it down. Shouldn't be able to do that. How do you solve it? Well, this is where you must do the math, and I won't go into that in this video, but I'll just explain very simply that a three-quarter inch Schedule 40 pipe can handle eight gallons per minute. And each nozzle requires a certain GPM to do its job. So let's say a 15 half nozzle uses 1.8 gallons per minute, or roughly two gallons per minute. How many 15 halves can you have on that line? Right, four. A 15 quarter uses half of that, and a 15 full uses roughly twice that of a 15 half. So if you have a lawn that is a perfect 13 by 26 foot rectangle, 
So it uses four 15 quarters and two 15 halves. The net equals eight gallons a minute. That's one line. Get the picture. If you have too many heads on the line, the three common solutions are split the line into however many lines is needed. This requires more sprinkler valves. Replace the nozzles or heads with lower volume types like rotary nozzles that can still reach the distance required. Or reduce your lawn area so you can cap off some of those heads. There are many factors that can contribute to bad coverage, but in giving you the extreme basics here, I hope you'll better understand what's causing it and have a heads up on resolving it. Again, the next video in this series will show an existing lawn installation and how I rectified the coverage issues there using these principles. I'll show you how to do the same thing. There's a lot more detail to cover, but this was just the extreme basics today. Did this answer any of your questions? Let us know in the comment section below and be sure to subscribe to be sure to get in on the next design videos. Remember the free downloads that can help you with your irrigation. And also remember the resources site linked below that has most of the products for sale that I've discussed in these videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.